So this may be a bit outside of the engineering domain, like um, hard hard engineering. It's uh, probably more of an uh, kind of an adjacent or supportive tool for your work, in particular for workflows where you need to um, read and research websites, papers, GitHub logs, or whatever um, that you need to either do by yourself or with other people. And where things become really tricky doing that. Um, so maybe. Some of you already have been running into these issues where, for example, you had uh, you wanted to save something, you need to copy paste links around, you need to copy paste text sections around. You have all these graveyards of documents all over the place uh, with the information that was really important, and uh, it becomes messy, messier and messier. In particular, uh, if you have to collaborate with other people, so it's already a problem if you're by yourself, but it's gonna get exponentially worse if you have to do any sort of like reading together papers, websites, etc. And so we built Memex to make that a bit easier. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna start with the more personal organization parts. So how do you keep track of the things you read online? And the, re and the next section will be, um, how do you do that collaboratively? So yeah, the, the most basic thing you need to do here with Memex is that if you wanna save an article, you just press on save. And from that point on, it's full text searchable. So that means you can find it even if you didn't put any organization on top. You can find it by all the words inside the article. So I'm just copy this word right now. And then you just press M space into the address bar and you can search for dialogues. It finds all the articles with dialogues. You see the first one is uh, Aristotle, but you can also get to dashboard where you can see a full overview of all the articles you saved or apply more filters. For example, the time frame, the domain it was on, or maybe spaces you put in. And spaces are for us a bit like tags with the difference that you can also share them or collaboratively curate them. But yeah, you don't have to not organize. You can also do some organization with that. And soon also you're gonna have the ability to have nested spaces so you can create trees um, that are present um, your folder structures that you maybe have in your bookmarks or that you just want to like organize things by project. The next thing that you can do with Memex is that you can also highlight and annotate. So if you want to mark up a piece of text, you just make a highlight here. Uh, you can also mark up a piece of text and add a comment to it. Okay, this is important like this. Works also with papers. So if we're going to an archive paper, for example, uh, and also works by the way with papers that are also uh, stored local. So if you wanna annotate a locally annotated PDF, you just drag it into a browser and do the same thing I just did, open the reader uh, where you can start annotating in Memex. Oh, like this. And then you just um, highlight a piece of text, same thing. And I'm actually right in this very moment and hopefully by tomorrow or latest on Monday, um, you're gonna also be able to drag rectangles that create screenshots and that also anchor. So you can also uh, annotate illustrations, et cetera, that are hard to capture in pure text. And the last content piece that you can annotate is YouTube videos. Oops, uh, there. Uh, there you can either create timestamp notes. So you can create like sections, like times, uh, timestamps with sections of the video. Uh, if you click on those timestamps, it actually will jump back and forth in the video um, to the places you wanted to annotate. Uh, the second thing is you can do smart notes, which essentially summarizes for you the last X seconds of the video. So if you don't want to type it up what's in, a, what's in the video, you can just let it like AI do the thing for you. Um, you can also decide on how many seconds you want to include in that summary. And you can also summarize the entire video, by the way. Um, we have an AI assistant that allows you to basically say, hey, I want to, for example, tell me the key takeaways of this video. And it will just go and uh, analyze the video and give you a summary. And you can prompt it however you want to, ultimately. Um, and the last bit is that you can also make screenshot-based annotations. So you can say, I want to get a snapshot of the current frame including a timestamp and make my note there because sometimes you want to capture, for example, yeah, maybe a, an important like graphic or so they used in the video, et cetera. Um, and uh, on the last piece of the personal organization stuff is that you, uh, since two days ago, uh, you also have now an Obsidian and Loxig integration that automatically syncs all the things you save and annotate into your graphs. 
Also, if you if you use any of those, uh, we can just go. Um, how I learned to stop worrying about nuclear waste. You see here, it's automatically already there. It's actually like super snappy. So if I add a new node here, you'll see how fast it will be here. Oh, that's it. Like it's very fast. Luckily, because uh, well, Obsidian. Obsidian's great infrastructure and architecture uh, is so close like to the file system that this is just very fast. Um, and we just save our updates to the file system, which is in this case a big advantage, which also would be a big advantage actually to use something like that with IPFS powered tools because you just need to write to the disk and that's it. And we have a, a kind of a, a local backup helper that allows you to um, like really quickly save anything to local disk uh, with it. And it's going to be also a bit of a jumping point later for uh, API connections that you want to do somewhere else, maybe in other apps that you want to integrate. We also, in that local backup helper, had um, a while ago a little a, a prototype for actually hooking uh, IPFS in natively. So if someone wants to revive this and um, make Memex more natively uh, working with IPFS, uh, just hit me up and we can chat about it. So yeah, these were the... Oh, damn it, you didn't actually see my, uh, I just realized you didn't see the uh, sync to uh, Obsidian because that part of the screen was not shared, bummer. But yeah, it's it's very snappy. It's basically uh, going there and but I wanna show it because it makes a lot of sense. So, so for example, if I add now a node here, this is always Obsidian. If I add a node here, you see how fast it's here. It's really quick, it's like instant essentially. And here are all the notes and the screenshots that I made already before. And those are also links to the YouTube video section. So you will always get back from that particular um, timestamp because it's all marked down. Yeah, interoperability. Great. Um, yeah, so the last bit I want to show is how do you collaborate? And this might be for people who have this workflow of needing to often share, for example, commentary on the things you read. Uh, maybe you want to discuss a paper in depth with other people and you want to have a quick way of doing that without needing to spam your chat logs or without copy pasting the content of the paper into a Google Doc and starting there, which I heard a lot of people do. And so in order to uh, start annotating a page together, the only thing you need to do here is really pressing on share page. What that will do is create a link to that page with the annotations on that page that you add there. Uh, in this case, the annotations that I already created before were private, so they're not automatically added there, but I can add them there. But all the annotations that I'm now adding while I'm in this what we call focus mode will automatically be added there. I'm just doing this right now quickly. And then if I take that link here, I can invite people to either have read access or have contribute access. And when they open this link, they will get to our web reader, which is a, um, a renderer for the annotations that they can uh, use, even if they don't use Memex. So this is the view that someone sees that does not use Memex as the extension. Um, they can see your highlights. They can even make their own highlights on top of it. Like this. See that? Um, add a comment, whatever. Um, and they don't need to install anything. You just send them a link. It's basically our design objective was making it as easy as working on a Google Doc when you want to collaborate with other people. That's the workflow for just one page. Um, if you want to, for example, share an entire research collection. So say, for example, yeah, you, you, have, you want to dive into some new machine learning technique and you want to collect a bunch of papers, a bunch of websites, a bunch of videos. Uh, you can do that by using the spaces I hinted at before. Let me find one, for example, here's one um, where those can also be shared. You can open them in a web view. This is links that people can open even again if they don't use Memex. Um, they see all your links here and see all the annotations here. If they click on those results, they get to that reader I showed before. And they can also summarize the article straight from here so they can get a kind of a skimmable overview of the things you put in without needing to read every single piece. Um, that you put in there. Yeah, um, that's it. That was Memex. If you want to um, get started with it, uh, check it out at memex.garden. So memex.garden. Like this. There you can download it. We're actually just about to start uh, like out of our closed beta. So this is really time timely uh, to present it today.
but we already have the sign up and logins and downloads open already. So check it out. Enjoy. Thank you.